How eating at restaurants will change after the virus. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And today we're going to be talking about how life through dine-in restaurants is really going to change after the pandemic. Because even today, right now, around the world, most of us that are sheltered in place are only able to eat uh, takeout or drive-through, and things have been changing quite a bit. But before I get into it, I do want to show off our little explorer, and she is in the Yellow Productions crew onesie right here that's it she's just fed she's a little tired so if she's a little fussy that is why but in this live stream today i'll be giving away either a yellow productions crew t-shirt that i'm wearing or a yellow productions crew onesie that our little explorer is wearing too all right that is her screen time for today now it's it's probably time for bed for our little explorer so off to off to dreamland all right, thanks for bringing some cuteness to the live stream, you know, because I always say that YouTube and the internet was built for uh, cats falling off televisions and, of course, cute babies. So, uh, on and how are you going to win the t-shirt or how are you going to win the onesie? Well, answering one of my questions correctly that will be coming up later in the live stream. So, uh, let's go to number one. The first thing that's going to change uh, eating out at restaurants once the virus is uh, gone and the pandemic is over is more delivery. In the U.S., we've seen tons of restaurants rush to Uber Eats and to DoorDash. Uh, and I really particularly like the new leave at door option. I don't know if any of you have used this yet, but in both of these apps, you can actually tell the drivers uh, not to bring it to your door, but actually, well, not to bring it inside or you don't have to go meet them, but they can actually leave it at the door. So that is great for germaphobes and introverts alike. And I think I actually have, ooh, I have, uh, I have pictures for this live stream too. Uh, Fred asked the question, how about an adult onesie? Ooh, I don't know that the place that I make the merchandise from has adult onesies, but there certainly are baby onesies if you want one. Uh, and Flynn says, what's the baby's name? The baby's name is the Traveling Princess. That is her name. Uh, all right. And uh, CJ said, uh, it's Lobster Fest. Lobster Fest? Is that how it's going to change? Everybody's going to eat lobster? I am not too sure. All right. So in addition to seeing more delivery, uh, number two, the way restaurants are going to change is... Dun, dun, dun. Uh, right here, we are going to see more delivery-only restaurants. I don't know if you guys have seen this trend where you live, but it's definitely a trend here in Southern California, uh, particularly in Pasadena. We were looking on Yelp for some restaurants that we like, uh, like the Halal Guys and this Masubi place, and we found all of them, but oddly enough, they shared the same address, and we went to this restaurant per se and we got there and there were no counters there were just computers that you could order something at and somebody would bring it out to you but there were actually six like chain restaurants or mini southern california chains that shared this one place essentially just so they could share the kitchen uh doordash has opened up some locations that are just kitchens and that's something we've seen around here also restaurants uh having like there's a pizza place i really like and they also serve tacos but they only serve tacos to Uber Eats and DoorDash. You actually can't get the tacos there. Uh, Eat Van City says those are called ghost restaurants. Absolutely. That is what uh, what sometimes they call them. Uh, CJ, uh, he must have used DoorDash or Uber Eats, and he is waiting on his Red Lobster order. Great. I hope you uh, get it in time to enjoy it on this live stream while we're all chatting. Uh, by the way, I'm curious. I'm using this new headset today. If any of you guys watch the Dave Ramsey's, Dave Ramsey show or listen to Dave Ramsey, this is the headset he uses, so I'm curious how this sounds. And it's supposed to be designed for sportscasters, people that are broadcasting in really noisy areas, and I was hoping that it would cancel out baby crying noises, perhaps. Uh, Grant points out that there will certainly be many new jobs for delivery people. Absolutely. I mean, there was a uh, video that I did last week or two weeks ago about what's good having and what's good happening in travel with this whole pandemic. Certainly a lot of waiters and waitresses are unemployed or out of work, but there's definitely lots of work in the food delivery area and also 
uh, in the package delivery area, right? Amazon can't deliver uh, packages enough. And Bryce, the first one who commented on the headset, seems like it gives better audio. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, and Kathy says, seems very loud. In a good way, or is it too loud? Other people said, Carmen says, sounds great. All right, that's good to hear. So I'm glad good reports on the audio. Uh, and there was a question about, are we going to see less buffets? And then Just Me says, buffets are a thing of the past. Already heard that. Yeah, already some of the buffets have closed in Las Vegas. I think what we're going to see is I think I think we'll still see buffets because I think people like all you can eat. But what I think we're going to see is we're going to see more people that are um, – you, like, you won't be able to get your own food. You'll kind of see like the food where they serve it to you. I think that's what we will see uh, more of. Uh, and Carmen says, we can afford to travel because we follow Dave Ramsey principles. Absolutely. Uh, that is what we do. And you know, it's funny because I, like, I really like the audio quality he had. And I was trying to figure out watching his live streams, what exactly his headphones were. And that required like, some time to deduce it. Uh, they're the audio technic headphones. More about that. Uh, and uh, Flynn says, if it's too loud, turn down your volume. All right. Uh, okay. So let's go on to number three. The uh, third thing that's going to change eating out in restaurants after the virus is lower limits on dine-in patrons in total. I think particularly in big cities, particularly like New York City, if you've ever dined in New York City, you'll know they pack people in like crazy. And this is something we were seeing at the beginning of the virus trend. Uh, here's Halal Guys uh, in Southern California, and they had closed every other table. You probably can't read this right here, but it says uh, this table closed due to social distancing. So I think we're going to see overall... Uh, health limits uh, and New York City type things in cities lessen the number of seats in places of business. But now number four that we're going to see is we're going to see uh, limits on tables. Now this might not be something that happens forever, but something it certainly happened in China currently in cities that they've opened up where they've limited the number of people to a table in a restaurant like they've said no more than three people can sit at one table uh, and this is a picture that uh, we took on our recent trip to Japan uh, this is actually in Tokyo this is a McDonald's restaurant in Tokyo and this was not due to the coronavirus but it's something they have there that maybe you don't see many places if you'll notice all of these people that are sitting here these are tables for one. These are all tables for one person. You notice there's just a bench seat and there's no seat on the other side. So I think that's something uh, that we will say more of. Kathy asks, uh, do you think they might take your temperature before you dine? I think they might. And that is a number coming up. Very good. Grant says restaurants will be quieter with fewer people. I think they will. An interesting note on places being quieter when I was in Macau, China, I went on a trip uh, with my mom there, and we went to a Peking duck restaurant. And when we were at that Peking duck restaurant, uh, they said to us, hey, we'll, we'll make sure you get a quiet table. And we're like, what's a quiet table? And then we quickly realized the quiet table was the table that wasn't with the mainland Chinese. If you don't know Chinese culture, they are very loud when they eat. And so there was one section of the restaurant with all the mainland Chinese, and then the other section basically with everybody else. And yes, the everybody else side was much quieter. Uh, Vic says a busy restaurant like Din Tai Fung will need to change. It probably will. Uh, less less seats too. Uh, MT says they better not get rid of my favorite revolving sushi place, Kura. Uh, yeah, and in Japan, a lot of the revolving sushi places have um, are only putting things on the rotating sushi that people have ordered and they're not coming around as much uh, or they'll need to have good lids or things like that. Uh, Electric Rick says maybe drive-in restaurants might make a comeback. They might, you know. And there was actually a, a news article recently here in Southern California about how, like, restaurants are really suffering. But you know who's still doing well? In-N-Out Burger. Mm. There are lines to go through the drive through for In-N-Out Burger. Why? Because In-N-Out Burger has a reputation for being clean, and you go through the drive through they stay six feet away, uh, so it's pretty good. Uh, Michael Newman points out about uh, – <laughs> the uh, Peking duck that I mentioned, or the Beijing Kalya uh, in Beijing, where it's from, they just call it duck. Yes, that absolutely makes sense. Um, 
And CJ also loves Kura for rotating sushi. Uh, Taishan says that movie theaters, before they shut down, did the limit thing at the beginning. Yeah, they did, uh, you know, give give people some space. I think that's maybe, I think like the luxury movie theaters are going to come back before the big packet movie theaters because the luxury theaters have the sofas and you just get more room between you and the other people. Um Let's see. Uh, Just Me says, many people will never know this place. It might be my favorite ever. Tide Pools at the Hawaii Kauai. You did a great review there. Thank you, Just Me. So if you're in Kauai, check out Tide Pools at the Hyatt that's there. Um, Eat Van City says, he was just in Taipei, and they are taking temperatures and offering hand sanitizer at the table. Was that at Din Tai Fung, Eat Van City, or just a regular restaurant there? Uh, the Real YT wants to know, what about menus? Yes, that's a number coming up. Uh, all right. And Vic Lau says in movies that drive in movies may also make a comeback. I think they very well might. And I think they actually are starting to make a comeback because people might like that safety of their own car. Uh, all right. So let's go on to the next number. So the, uh, fifth thing we're going to see change dining out at restaurants is we're going to see more space between tables, you know, and maybe more outdoor dining too, right? And not outdoor dining like in Paris where you're sitting six inches from that person, but outdoor dining where you actually have a lot more space. I mean, that's something even today I don't love being packed in. I also really don't love the restaurants where you have to share tables with other people. Maybe extroverts love that, and I'm sure that uh, people might think, well, Chris, you must be an extrovert because you do all this YouTube stuff. Actually, I'm an introvert at heart. By the way, speaking of assumptions, uh, a suggestion on the last live stream was that I do an upcoming live stream reacting to your assumptions about me. So if you want to get in on that and get some assumptions that I'll react to, you can find a post on my Facebook page, my Instagram page, and the YouTube community tab. Leave your assumptions there about me for me to react to in a live stream next week week. Uh, Eat Van City says the In-N-Out Burger is not as good as Shake Shack. Eat Van City, those are some fighting words. Mm. I, uh, now, I'm not going to argue that Shake Shack isn't good. It's really good. But if I'm picking cleanliness and social distancing, I'm definitely picking In-N-Out Burger. Shake Shacks really don't say... Um, Really don't say uh, – Shake Shacks really don't have drive throughs Brian27 says, can you please say something to make me feel better? Brian, the good news is this will be over. This will end. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. We're going to get through this. Uh, so hopefully that will make you feel better. And if it doesn't, well, stay tuned for the end of this video because I've got some great relaxing videos to show you uh, by uh, a fellow explorer who's actually on the live stream right now, Grant Richardson. He started up this channel called Mel vistas to help you relax with quiet vistas and so we're going to end this live stream uh, when we end in about a half hour with uh, something from there that i'm sure will make you feel better uh kathy says all of our drive-in movie theaters had to close now that's really lame i feel like that's just one of those closing for no reason because what's what's happening there oh and speaking of grant he left a comment said i hope smaller restaurants will update their websites to better accommodate takeout and delivery i hope so as well that's another number number we are coming up to uh amber says hopefully more reservations at all locations of restaurants so the environment is more controlled i think reservations will definitely be a lot better than standing in long lines as well um let's see okay uh so let's go on to uh actually one more comment oc steve says communal tables will go the way of the dodo more space means price will go up in restaurants to make up for the lack of customers that's probably true unless they figure out how to turn the tables faster uh which i think maybe they'll have to figure out too uh grant richardson said i recall dining outdoors at a local restaurant in Hong Kong, and the waitress barked at me for making her walk outside, but it's one of the restaurant's many tables outside. That's hilarious. Uh, Adventure Mate says, outdoor dining might be a bit of a problem in rainy Seattle. Uh, I bring an umbrella, I guess? I don't know. Uh, CJ says, I don't get the cult status of In-N-Out Burger. Well, tell you what, come to Southern California. Come with me to In-N-Out Burger. I will indoctrinate you into the cult. That's a whole, whole separate video, a whole separate argument, I guess. Though, no arguing here. All right. The sixth thing that's going to change, I need to put this finger down here. The sixth thing that's going to change uh, in eating out at restaurants when the virus is over and we can go back to eating at them again is actual cleaning of tables. 
not cleaning of tables like this. You know how many restaurants clean tables today? They have that like the bucket of like really dirty, filthy water, and they have that same rag that they've used to clean the bar as they used to clean the floor as they used to clean the table. Like that's gross. I think we're going to see restaurants actually cleaning tables. And speaking of Shake Shack, I feel Shake Shack is really – they've been a leader in this trend even before the virus that when Shake Shack cleans tables, they actually have a package of disposable sanitary wipes and they take something out of that package of wipes, they clean the table, they throw it away, and then they move on to the next table. So I think we're going to actually see more of that rather than just filthy tables and more people that sit at those filthy tables. Vic Lau thinks that the TV dinner will make a comeback. I could totally see that because people want to just eat more at home in front of the television. Or in this case, maybe they want to Maybe they want to sit at home and eat eat in front of YouTube, right? We can have a mukbang together. Uh, Omar says, thanks for using the mic. Omar, do you like the audio quality on this microphone better? Thank you uh, for the thought. I know I don't get to show off my great hair as much because it kind of tamps it down a little bit. Uh, and Tanner disagrees that uh, TV dinners are not making a comeback because they are awful. Triangle C says, I wish I could eat out again, but can't trust the people in the restaurant kitchens to keep up the rigorous hygiene standards that would be required now. I think you have to be, I mean, you certainly have to be careful as to where you pick. I think there are some restaurants that do. Uh, Din Tai Fung is an example of restaurants that are role models for creating, and so I would not, I would not worry about eating there. Um, OC oh, Steve thinks that the sanitary grades will be highly enforced moving forward. No easy A's. Uh, I hope so. You know, there's the big joke that uh, A, uh, well, at A's restaurant, B means it's better. C is for Chinese food. And if it gets a D, well, that means it's really delicious. Uh, yeah, but that's one of the, you know, you look at the letter grades and you're like, how is this place still open if it has a C and it's really busy? Um, all right. So uh, let's go on. Speaking of Din Tai Fung, we'll go on to number seven and an example I will say about Din Tai Fung. The seventh thing that's going to change uh, dining out at restaurants after the virus is dining at restaurants. We're going to see a lot less of this, which is common things just on the table. It's certainly something we've seen go away at the beginning days of the pandemic when people could still eat at restaurants. They took away the communal ketchup. They took away the salt and pepper. Uh, but I think I think we'll see them come back. But I think we'll see more restaurants actually clean them, uh, so and not leave them there between guests. At Din Tai Fung, this is the set of table things for Din Tai Fung. They have soy sauce, vinegar, salt, pepper, and chili sauce. And between guests, they take that away. And they bring a new one. Everything is always filled up, and they clean it as well. So you're not using that soy sauce that who, who knows how many people have touched. Um, let's see. Uh, Vic Lau says, a lot of smaller ethnic restaurants can't afford the staff to clean properly. I don't think it's that they can't afford the staff. I just think they don't. They don't care. They don't prioritize that because their guests don't prioritize it, that the people who go to those restaurants are looking for the cheapest food there is. But I think – uh, I think patrons will become wiser now, and I think they'll look for more cleanliness, which I think will then drive that in restaurants, and I think we'll see that. Just like In-N-Out Burger today, super long lines of In-N-Out Burger in the drive through Jack in the Box, McDonald's, not so much because as we've heard before, uh, people cannot trust – people cannot trust the staff that's there at some of these places. Uh, Eat Van City asks if we order from restaurants or cook at home mostly. We cook at home mostly. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't not have it in and out forever. And so I, I haven't been there for a week, but I did have to go there uh, today through the drive-through. I've uh, mostly been cooking at home. E Phoenix wants to know what headphone and microphone are you using? Uh, this is the it's an Audio Technica microphone. Uh, I don't have the exact model in front of me. It's something new that I just got. This is the first time I'm using it. I'll put it uh, in future descriptions of these live streams and probably talk about it uh, separately. But it's the one that Dave Ramsey uses to do his radio show as well. Tyshawn asks, Will there still be bread baskets? Hmm. Yeah, like baskets. Those. Like that's really hard to clean, right? To clean a basket. Uh, I think we'll still see bread come to the table, but I think we'll see it come in something easier to clean, something that's more plastic, uh, or you know, something that's like entirely throw away. Oh, Steve. 
OC Steve says, maybe we'll see restaurants that are not BYOB, but they're BYOC. Bring your own condiments. I think that's an interesting perspective. Um, Eat Van City said in Taiwan, uh, they had all single serve packets at the time. Wow, that's interesting. They've taken it to uh, another level. Um, Ron Mexico says, we all have to eat more equally around the world. It would be more healthy for Americans, Germans, and Brits. Does that mean we're going to like travel around the world to eat in more different places? What, what does that mean to eat more equally around the world? Uh, and Fallout uh, just joined and said uh, that he thinks that prices will definitely go up as restaurants spend more money on cleaning to compensate for lost profit. All right, let's go on to the next number. Uh, so the eighth thing that we're going to see in restaurants uh, once we can eat there again is we're going to see more protective gear. We're going to see more masks. We're going to see more gloves. And I think we're going to see more of these like cough guards. This is something you'll see a lot in Asia today, but you almost never see in uh, the West. These are these like plastic things designed uh, that if you cough, that the cough or the sneeze goes right into that plastic thing uh, and it actually prevents the water droplets from ending up on the food. And it kind of makes it, I think sometimes people think like, oh, face masks are creepy because you can't see the people behind them. But this is another way of doing that, that you can still see the face of the person behind it. Uh, and so I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, and Ron says, oh, we need to eat meat more equally. I guess I must have uh, missed one of your words in it. Uh, all right. Uh, Tranquil C says, I took a look into a small Greek takeout restaurant today, and the people behind the counter didn't even wear gloves, let alone masks. I have no idea what those people are thinking. I have no idea what those people are thinking either, and I I hope that like people vote with their business and don't eat at restaurants where people don't seem to be thinking about uh, cleanliness anymore. Um, David Family says, the restaurant business was already hard. I think we'll be left with only large corporates in this space. I, I don't think so. I think it just has to be small restaurants, too, that understand that cleanliness is important. Uh, and uh, Kathy says, these could be better than the mess. They absolutely could. OC Steve has been eating more at home. Sam, the cooking guy, is amazing. Uh, looking forward to eating at Gray's in San Diego. I've not eaten there, but I'll have to check that one out. Uh, Ron says, the rest of the world lives on rice, beans, veggies, and fruit. Uh, all right. I like beans. Beans, beans, the musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot. All right. I'll be here all week if you want more songs. This is something that a few people mentioned earlier. Uh, the ninth thing. The ninth thing. The ninth thing, the ninth thing. How many fingers do I have? Which way do I do this? All right. The ninth thing that we're going to see change dining out in restaurants once the virus is over is we're going to see more temperature checks at restaurants. Uh, Eat Van City said he already witnessed this in Taipei. Uh, it's happening in Beijing, and it's actually already happening in the U.S. Uh, there is a Sichuan restaurant in... Um, in Orange County and Los Angeles, it's called like Sichuan Experience, and they are already taking the temperature of patrons who come to their stores. Obviously, they can't do dine-in, but if you come in to pick up stuff and they were doing it before they had to close down, uh, take your temperature. If your temperature's got a fever, sorry, you can't eat there today. Uh, I know that a number of people have said, well, this doesn't this doesn't solve everything because you can show symptoms of – you can be contagious with coronavirus before you show symptoms, but at least this helps rule out the people who already are running a fever. Uh, until we end up in the place where we have some other unintrusive test or we can check that people are vaccinated or immunized, I talked all about that, about how travel is going to change. And I think for flights, you'll have to show things like are you immunized against it? Did you get your COVID-19 shot? We're probably not going to see that quite at restaurants because that's that's hard more invasive i think people are willing to get those invasive things uh when they are flying on planes grant richardson says he's eaten out more than normal to support uh his neighbors who own two vietnamese restaurants hey that's great grant uh thanks for supporting your local restaurants eat van city says i think this pandemic has shut down lots of mom and pop places uh, it probably has. I mean, maybe not yet, but I know certainly in L.A. there's always news about the restaurants that are closing because they just can't make it anymore or they were already struggling and this was sort of the death nail for them. Um, 
Kathy says that they're taking temperatures uh, in most stores, even chemists and pharmacies, before they pick up prescriptions. Wow. We've not seen that here really in Southern California yet, uh, but I can probably see that in stores at some point. David says in New Zealand, all hospitality outlets have been closed. No takeout at all. Everyone is eating at home, probably a healthier way. I don't know if, if it's necessarily a healthier way. Maybe for you because you eat fresh foods and cook good things. But I think a lot of people, like at least when I went to the grocery store during some of the like pandemic shopping days, you know, the things that disappeared first were all of the frozen stuff, frozen pizzas, this and that, which are really not that healthy. But I think that's actually stuff that a lot of people are uh, cooking right now. Uh, like ice cream disappeared like nobody's business uh, and probably eating pints of ice cream for dinner uh, is maybe not that great. Brian27 says we can come over to his restaurant. He's a good cleaner. Where is your restaurant, Brian? What's its name? Maybe people will. You never know. With 125 people on the live stream, maybe there's someone on who lives in your town too. Oh, and OC Steve uh, said he really dug the uh, the face shields. He said uh, you could make it a whole sci-fi utopian theme like Demolition Man. You probably could. All right, let's go on to the next number. Uh, this is number 10. I think we're going to see straws make a comeback. I think we're going to make see straws make a comeback. You know, there was this whole trend in a lot of places, including California, to get rid of straws because straws are evil. But, you know, straws are more sanitary, right? Uh, so I think we're going to see straws make a comeback, people regularly putting straws back in that cup again. Uh, Hidden Key Master says pastas are what first disappeared in New Jersey food-wise. Uh, that makes sense because they last a long time. O.C. Steve says, due to this outbreak, all restaurants will become Taco Bell. Demolition Man reference. That's funny. Uh, honestly, Bridget says, I'm sounding a little stuffy. Am I feeling okay? I'm feeling fine. You're probably just listening to me on a different microphone. Uh, Kathy says, I don't really like cooking at home, but we have to do it more recently. I also like to support people. Uh, people. I also like to support local businesses with takeout often. That's great, Kathy. Eat Van City asks, what do you eat on an average day? Uh, let's see. For breakfast, I pretty much always eat the same thing. For breakfast, I eat two pancakes. I eat a sunny side up egg and I eat a slice of bacon with some apple juice and generally some Earl Grey tea to drink. That's my morning breakfast. For lunch, it's really varied. In this time, um, you know, we bought some things from like local Japanese markets, made some rice bowls sandwiches whatever i might make a i might make a drive through run to in and out burger um for dinner uh just a lot of different stuff things we like to make you know japanese curry we love to make uh we also like to make uh, like pastas spaghetti pasta carbonara uh, i love to make steaks outside i also love to make sausages so those are uh some of the things that we eat Grant wants to know if Costco employees will be handing out free food samples. I think they aren't right now. Well, the question is, will they come back? I think Costco will figure out how to make the food samples come back, maybe just with more higher sanitary standards. Triangle C says the military is experimenting with shrink-dried food and pills. Maybe we'll get pill restaurants like a Mel Brooks comedy. That, that would be fun. Uh... All right. And uh, O.C. Steve says those paper straws are horrible. It takes a dozen to finish your average day. I agree. I hate, I hate the paper straws. Can't stand them. Uh, Electric Rick, uh, who's my dad, says, I'm having a new cape made with a matching face mask. You're going to love it. I am definitely going to love it. Uh, send me the picture when you do, and uh, I'll share it with our fellow explorers on the live stream because I think they'll love it too. O.C. Steve says, Captain Picard for breakfast, make it so. If I had a replicator, I would definitely ask for tea, Earl Grey, hot. All right, next number. The 11th thing that we're going to see at restaurants uh, when the virus goes away is we're going to see less standing in line, and we're going to see more mobile ordering. Uh, like, who wants to stand in line with a bunch of people? Why don't you just order it on your phone and then get a notification when it's ready and then go pick it up when it's ready? This is something where Shake Shack, they don't have a drive through but they do have a shelf with mobile order pickup. You pay online. You don't have to exchange money. You don't have to give somebody a credit card. And you know when it's right. You can just stand outside. You get the push notification, and you go pick it up. I think the challenge right now with a lot of this online ordering is 
It doesn't give you notification when it's ready. We did this recently at a restaurant via Yelp, and like it told us, yeah, your food will be ready in like 40 minutes. I'm like, that's a long time. We showed up at the restaurant 15 minutes later. I said, we ordered online, and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's right here. Well, we would have waited 25 extra minutes if we didn't just walk in and, and know that it was there. And, of course, they were inundated with calls because that's how most people make their order. So I think we're going to see more online ordering, less standing in line, less calling over the phone. Uh, and OC Steve says it will be Electric Rick Von Doom as his name. Mwahahahaha. Uh, Eat Van City said he just had SNB Kari Risu. Uh, Japanese curry rice for dinner. Uh, excellent eat, Von City. Um, Debbie says, hi, I work for a name chain restaurant. They closed us. Servers have no jobs all now. I'm sorry, Debbie. Hopefully they reopen again soon so you have a job again. Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, Kathy says right now she uses McDonald's and KFC mobile apps to order, then pick up through the drive-thru. Interesting. Uh, thank you for that data point, Kathy. Fallout Fan 66 says, not sure how many restaurants are doing this, but my local Buffalo Wild Wings is putting X's on the ground a few feet apart from each other to stand on while they wait for their takeout. Interesting. Uh, Calm asks if I work out in the morning. Uh, I like to go for at least like a 30-minute walk in the morning to kind of like wake up. Uh, on weekends, then uh, I like to go for a bike ride or we like to go hike. I like to swim, but there's no swimming right now because all, all the swimming pools are closed. Uh, Ron Mexico says, masked granddads are very nice for grandkids. Electric Rick, they learn so much about the world. Good deal. All right. Next number. The 12th thing we're going to see at uh, eating out of restaurants is we're going to see more mobile and touchless payments. And uh, somebody asked and said, uh, oh, hey, they, they, they talked about the menu, which is going to be one of our numbers coming up. But in this one, I really want us to get rid of the signature, and I really want us to get rid of that that yucky billfold. You know that, that thing that says like an American Express or Visa on it that's made of like some leather or plastic leather or something that you're like, oh, when is the last time this thing has been cleaned? It's been cleaned never. So yeah, please just bring us the uh, mobile payment thing. Let us tap our card. Let us tap our uh, remote. You know, what would be even better is maybe we could just like tap our credit card on the way in and order stuff. And then when we leave, we just get uh, automatically charged. I think that'd be really cool. Now, that doesn't, doesn't mean we can tip, but I think a lot of people would say, Man, maybe we just get rid of tips and pay everybody a fair wage. Oh, that's a debate for a whole nother video. Uh, Gage says, my computer is on fire, and it, it is on fire. <gasps> I just thought the fireplace would be nice for us to have this fireside chat. Um, Eat Van City says, I think there will be uh, virtual waiters in the future recommending dishes. It may be like conveyor belt sushi places in Japan. I love that concept, and I think Japan is a great example about how to do a lot of this right. And I'm going to talk about it as we get to the next number, number 13. So number 13, I think we're going to get rid of that yucky menu that nobody cleans because I think nobody's going to want to touch the yucky menu. And there's a lot of ways to get rid of the yucky menu. This is one way. This is at a Korean restaurant uh, here in Southern California called BCD Tofu. And their menu is the placemat. This is the placemat that's at your table. It's the menu. When you say what you want, the actual waiter or waitress will circle it on your placemat that way you're sure that you're asking for the same thing and then that gets thrown away because it was your placemat uh, and so everybody gets a new menu uh, I think some other things that I'd really like to see I'd like to see more of the Japanese style vending machines for those of you who have been to Japan or seen my videos on Japan you'll know that a lot of restaurants in Japan have these machines where you can uh, you put in your money and you push a button and it prints out a ticket that has your food on it and then you sit down, you put your ticket right where you sit down that has your order and then the servers just pick that up. So that's almost better than a virtual waiter. In that case, you don't need a waiter to take your order. You place your order on the way in. You're sure that your order is right because you got something that confirmed it because it was printed out and then you just place it there and they just come and pick it up. So that avoids this whole, you know, the waiter standing here and barking at you or whatever in a noisy, busy place. Uh, so I would really like to see that. 
Uh, Grant says tapping the card would be perfect at local dim sum restaurants. It sure would in places where there really isn't a menu and you just get stuff. Uh, House of Sid asks, how's the in and out payment process? I don't want anyone touching my cards even through the drive through They have totally changed how they take payments at in and out Burger, and it's evolved over the last couple weeks. But previously, in and out Burger would have like uh, sort of like three stations you would go to. So outside, they have someone who takes your order on like an iPad or something. Then there'd be the first window you would come up to where you would pay, and then the next window you would get your food. Well, now that window that you pay in, the first couple days of this, the person who was taking credit card payments would hold the credit card machine out the window so you could put your credit card into it. Now they've actually got credit card readers with the people that are outside taking the order. So these people are standing outside by the drive-thru. They take your order. They stand six feet away. They ask if you're paying by card. If you're paying by card, if it's a tap card, you can just kind of like put it near the thing so you don't have to touch it. If it's a chip insert card, they hold the machine. You insert the card. You take it out so they actually don't touch it. So that's a great way of making that so that nobody has to take your card. Um, Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, James asked if I use Apple Pay. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I generally use – I've got one credit card that does the tap, and I try to do that. Uh, Ian comments about uh, dining at those restaurants that you can just uh, – Pick things at the Japanese vending machines. It's so easy. No need to even speak Japanese. Absolutely. Uh, and Paige also agrees. She says she loves Japanese restaurants. Omar says Olive Garden will probably remove the tablets from the tables. Yeah, they've got these like iPads and what, or are they Android devices? I don't know. But yeah, you don't want to do that unless they actually really wash and disinfect that thing. Um, so, you know what time it is now. We've been through all 13 items. It is now... Wah, wah, wah. It is now question and answer time. This is the Q&A portion of the video. And uh, so we've upped this production quality of this video immensely today for this live stream with the new headset and... Oh, this where's where's this? No 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 no. Right, this right here. Isn't this amazing? I think this is pretty amazing. This is how you know when you come in the live stream in the future that we're now at question and answer time. So we'll take about ten minutes of question and answers. Uh, and uh, these can be about different topics, uh, but they could be about this topics that we're talking about too. So if you were trying to ask a question in the last two Q and A sessions and you didn't get one, uh, now is your chance to ask those questions. And AJ said. This is a great question. Why isn't a banana called a yellow if an orange is called an orange? Wow, that's – I don't know, AJ. That's a really great question. Um, Fred Lim uh, comments about those vending machines and says the vending interface will be dirty. Uh, yeah, maybe. But, you know, I think there's ways we could figure out how do we clean that or how do you do something like that on your mobile device that prints it out. Uh, I think there's ways to make something like that work that you don't actually have to place your order with a person. Kathy says, I've been doing jigsaw puzzles to pass time. Have you done any or what have you been doing? Uh, I have been uh, writing content for live streams. I've been editing videos. I've been, I've been spending... I've been spending who knows how long trying to come up with things like this. It's amazing how little video editing things can take a long time. Uh, OC Girl, she's been building this little, this little, um, this little music box right here. You can see this thing as it's in process. This is a little wooden music box. And uh, it's, you can see it's like it's halfway in process. It's by a company called Rocker. And uh, it's going to be like a bunny music box right that. So that's one way we've been passing the time. And you can see when we, when we do this and we turn it, right, you can hear that music box right there. So if you want some kind of wooden puzzles, uh, check out the rocker music boxes. There's the half-built bunny. Uh... Ooh, D. Presset asks, why does your feet smell but your nose run? Hmm, 
That's a good question. I was just smelling through my nose, seeing if I could figure that out. That's. I think I'm gonna ponder that. I think that will help me. I think that will help me go to sleep tonight as I ponder that. House of Sid asks, "How do you think Disneyland food services will change?" I think. I think they will encourage more people to do the mobile order pickup, less of the like stand in the really big long line. I think in general in Disneyland we'll see a lot more changes in that effect of uh, less lines and more like what they're doing with Rise of the Resistance right now, giving people a boarding pass and saying, hey, come back at this time. Uh, Blake asks, will flight be cheaper or more expensive after all this? Uh, My answer is yes. Yes, they will be. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, so they will be, uh, cheaper and they'll be cheaper at first and then they'll be more expensive later. Uh, watch my video on Monday where I talk about what the future of travel is going to look like, uh, because in that one, uh, I talk, um, I talk all about flights and more expensive and why they're going to be cheaper and why they're going to be more expensive. Elliot says, uh, hey, Chris, do you think a universal basic income like Andrew Yang proposed during his campaign would be a good idea for now through the end of this pandemic? Uh, I think so. I think it makes sense at this point to just issue everybody some amount of dollars from the government because there's a lot of people that are really struggling to get by, struggling to pay rent, people out of jobs. I mean, that's super stressful. And if you want people to stay healthy against a pandemic, uh, it's not them worrying about uh, rent. Ron asks if he can take a selfie with me when I visit Copacabana or Ipanema, Rio de Janeiro. Absolutely. Uh, You're totally welcome to take a selfie with me. I would just say because I take selfies with anybody who meets me in person. And uh, I would just say if you do want to take a selfie with me and you see me in the wild, come up and first start with, hey – I love your YouTube channel. Can I take a selfie? It's kind of weird when people come up and just walk up to me and go, hey, can I take a selfie with you? I'm like, oh, it's kind of creepy. Is it because you watch my YouTube channel? Yeah, okay, then you can take a selfie. If it wasn't and you just a random person you want to take a selfie with, then that's kind of weird. Lab says, what's your favorite shade of yellow? Golden yellow, lemon yellow, pastel yellow. Uh, I would say it's it's this yellow, whatever you call this yellow. I, I call this like sun yellow. Like I like the I like the yellow to be bright like the sun. I don't really like it to be like neon and I don't really like it to be green and I don't really like it to be like mustardy. So a bright, cheerful, sunny yellow. Uh <laughs> Kathy says, uh, these are, there are some strange questions today. There are. I, uh, I encourage the strange questions. We had questions about time travel teleportation yesterday. I'm still waiting for the questions about werewolves uh, and vampires. Neil asks, who's my favorite YouTuber? You know, some of the YouTubers that I watch the most are YouTube channels about how to do better at YouTube. So, uh, like, I watch video creators and video influencers. Uh, in the in the travel space, uh, a couple of travel channels that I really like. I really like uh, Walter's World, and I also really like uh, Attaché Travel Guides. Uh, now, if you want to support a couple of fellow explorers that watch here regularly, uh, – uh, Scottman 895 Travel does a lot of great videos uh, around the kind of eastern seaboard. Uh, and um, let's see. Uh, I'll also be plugging another channel before we end here too. Jake McShane asks, how many hours of sleep have you been getting each night uh, since the little princess is born? I, I'll say actually we're doing pretty good. I mean the first few weeks are pretty rough, uh, but we sort of have like a handoff schedule. And, and I would argue we're – we're probably getting seven to eight hours, but it's not like it's not like all in one stint. It definitely gets broken up. So maybe it takes ten hours to get all that time. Uh, but sleep is important. Gravel asks if Disneyland is still closed right now. It sure is. Uh, Kay Clark asks if I'll be traveling less when the pandemic ends. Will you go first? We'll be traveling less probably because of our little princess that just will cause us to stay home more, maybe not driven by the pandemic. I think this year will be less travel just because it'll be hard for it to come back and and all those kinds of things. Uh, All right. So I want to ask a question now. Um, And oh, by the way, Scottman895 is on the live stream right now. It's really great to see you right there. So if you want to know what the spelling of his channel looks like, it's right there. And And that's... Uh, and it's really hard to point to things on that screen, and that is him. Uh, and Scott, I, I assume you're 
I don't know. Are you are you still coming to San Diego? I assume you've probably canceled that trip, right? Um, Michael C says, "What is that thing next to your monitor with the fire? Looks like something from Star Wars. This thing right here. This is my uh, blue Yeti USB microphone. So this is when I am uh, like dubbing audio over." My video, like I forgot to say something or I need to add something for continuity's sake, then I record on this. Ha ha ha. Yeah, and this on top of it, this is a pop filter, and then this is a windscreen because nobody likes the. Yeah, nobody likes that. Sorry for people who had headphones that I just made a large popping noise in your headphones. All right, it is time to do the t shirt giveaway uh, for the Yellow Productions Crew t shirt. So, if you would like to win a Yellow Precious Crew t-shirt, or if you prefer, I'll send you the onesie that I showed uh, our little princess uh, wearing earlier. The question, I mentioned that uh, these headphones that I'm wearing today, I saw them on somebody else's channel. Who did I see wearing these headphones uh, and say, I like their audio quality, I want to get those too. So if you can tell me who that person is that also uses this same headset microphone, you will win a Yellow Productions t-shirt shipped anywhere to you in the world uh, and if you haven't won one yet you want to buy one I do have a link in the description below to my Etsy shop uh, and I think they will uh, go almost anywhere the real YT says uh, he just subscribed to Scott's channel awesome that is great to hear uh, MT says he's never winning the shirt I never say never there's opportunities on every live stream uh, wow there are a lot of people that uh, were listening and got that but the purse first person was Keith Mitchum, said Dave Ramsey. And I'm sure that Ricky is going to say, but Chris, wasn't it me? And uh, Ricky, I'm going to say, so you can see right here, that's the list on my screen. And uh, Keith was the first one to say Dave Ramsey. CJ thought maybe it was him, but it wasn't. Ricky, you were so close, number two. And then a wall of people got in with that right now. So Keith, you win a uh, Yellow Productions Crew t-shirt right there. Uh, you can either send me a message on Facebook or you can send me an email to chris at yellow.net with two W's. Uh, let me know what address you want me to send it to and what size shirt you want or if you want the onesie. Uh, Michael asked uh, if I have a men's XL onesie. No, I just have baby size onesies. Uh, all right, so the question, next question is when's the next live stream going to be? Well, uh, I'm doing the reactions to your assumptions live stream. I'll do that next week. This is the end of this week's series, Monday through Thursday. Uh, so if you want to get your assumptions in for that live stream, Find my Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram post. Let me know what you assume about me, and I will react to that assumption when I do that live stream. Now, there was a question earlier uh, saying, Chris, can you say something to me to help cheer me up? Well, one of our fellow explorers, I mentioned this earlier, Grant Richardson, has a channel called Mellow Vista. And on the Mellow Vista channel, he's got all sorts of Mellow Vista videos, things like fly fishing in the Colorado. Colorado River, majestic sunset in Hawaii, uh, gentle sound of uh, quaking aspens, relaxing sounds of a beach. So if you need things in these times to help you relax, definitely check out the Mellow Vista channel, support a fellow explorer here. Uh, and I usually end with this New York scene, but today I am going to end with uh, a Mellow Vista from Grant Richardson. We will go out with this for about two minutes, and if you like it, well, maybe you'll decide to head over there. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in the next live stream, which will be next week. And if you missed the previous ones this week, make sure to check out my vlog uh, playlist where you can check out all of the Q&A sessions. Uh, and thank you, everybody who's leaving the kind words about uh, be safe. And thank you for providing the comment. Good night, Chris. I know a lot of you leave these at the end of live streams. I never put them up there, but I want to let you know that I read all of them. Uh, and, uh, and it's why I do this. I do it because uh, you guys are all that awesome. All right.